Hello all you out there in YouTube land, this is trans 10 and I am back with another action figure review. For those of you who are like me, we all hate bugs. Well, it's not that I don't hate them, but I don't like it when they become obtrusive pests. Basically, you open up a box of Cheez-Its and you find a bunch of ants in there. Yeah, that's not really cool in my book. You have no idea if they came from your house or if they came from the store, but whatever. They're bugs, they're obtrusive, and a lot of people have hate for them. So why would a company like Playmates Toys release a figure that looks like a bug? Well, because as a kid, you like bugs. Bugs are really cool. They're really interesting creatures. They don't look like you. They don't look cute and cuddly. They're, they're just weird. So there's an immediate fascination with bugs. So, in 1990, part of their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles line, um, Series 3, we got a bug. In the form of... Scumbug! The Turtle Busting Exterminator. He comes in the same packaging as the other Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and that is the Green on Brick card. And once again, this is just a wonderful, wonderful representation of card art. I mean, if you haven't seen any of my other Ninja Turtle reviews, I'll just say it really quick and simple. Card art is not like it was in 1990. Here you have three pictorials of the character on all four sides. So that way... If you're looking down the toy aisle and you're looking for one very specific character, you don't have to take every single figure off of the peg rack. You could just look for any of these recognizable images and you'll know exactly what figure it is that you're looking for. It's a very great, rec great piece for easy recognition on the toy aisles. And there's another thing I love about the Ninja Turtles toy line itself is the card art. Because the art itself is actually pretty decent. Now, it's not like Masters of the Universe great or Transformers Generation 1 accurate. But it's a very nice, if somewhat exaggerated effort. And it does the job well. The back of the card, of course, we have the portrait of Scumbug. If you want to read it, pause it. If not, well, you're not really going to miss anything. With all the accessories and, of course, what was available in 1990. But enough about that. Here is Scumbug. Scumbug, of course, is a fantastic looking figure. Definitely one of my favorite figures to come out of the Ninja Turtles toy line. I've had this guy ever since I was about five or six years old. I got a replacement card backing and a couple of accessories that were missing along the way, but this is one of the rare figures that I actually owned since childhood. Although I didn't really like to play with him much, I did like to stare at him, and there's good reason why. He is very disgusting. He's repulsive. He scared my mother. But most of all, he was cool. This guy is just oozing with repulsion, as I just said. This guy was, according to the bio, this guy was hired by the Shredder to take care of his bug problem in the Technodrome. Apparently, there was roaches all about. Maybe Bebop and Rocksteady left the fridge open or, you know, just were falling behind on their cleaning duties, and it gathered roaches. So Shredder had to outsource some professional help to get rid of this problem. So here comes Scumbug. He was a, just a very human exterminator just sent to do his job, and I guess in the process or afterwards of doing so, maybe when he asked for a very, very... high, you know, payment, because it is the Technodrome, the Technodrome is huge, and, you know, to eliminate all roaches from it, it's got to be raise the bill a little bit. So, however it happened, he was accidentally mutated by that wonderful mutagen ooze, and now he mutated into something that he hates. 
that's got to be just ironic. It's ironic for one. It's also got to be very frightening. This guy must have been going through an identity crisis. I mean, you spend all your life hunting bugs. You hate them. You know all about them. You know how to destroy them. And now you're spending the rest of your life as one. This has got to be one twisted individual. Which makes him perfect for the Foot Clan as Shredder hires him right on the spot to deliver toxic turtle exterminating juice to his hatred foes, Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, and Michelangelo. And of course, their sensei, Splinter. Looking at cl a bit close up of Scumbug, looking at him, and this is just a wonderful, wonderful figure. It's very colorful. The blacks and the purples very, very complement each other very nicely, along with the uh, teal shirt and green boot. Everything looks just interesting and colorful and really does grab the attention of any onlooker going down the toy aisle. One thing about him that d does make him disgusting is he's almost like it's almost as if he's only half mutated, or that he's completely mutated and he has yet to shed the human flesh that made his old persona. Because as you can see, you have all of these little spikes and points bursting through his flesh, and the flesh is just tearing away from his new buggy endoskeleton. The, everything's just bulging out and just very disgusting. This figure scared my mom. I mean, she got this for me for my birthday, and she was kind of scared and frightened of it whenever she would see me, you know, either looking at it or playing with it. This, this is just one of your typical disgusting designs, and I... I'm just in love with it. I'm in love with the bulbous bug eyes, the articulation of the jaw, which is, I think, the second ever time that they gave an articulated jaw to a figure, the first being Leatherhead, which makes a little chattering noise as you move his head back and forth. And it is removable, but being that this is the figure that I had since a child, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to break it. But he's got a nice little tongue, and his teeth are all painted. And I especially love how his tendrils, his antennae, are wrapped up in what seems to be like a hair scrunchie. And it comes out and bellows a little bit. Kind of arches. Kind of like a blonde hair from hair metal bands. His articulation is, as such, he does have the rotating head, but can only go not even 180 simply because the shell is in the way and the jaw. The jaw can only go but so much. The arms can go 180. They could go 360 if it wasn't for the blasted shell. And, of course, the wrists and the arms do rotate. The legs are like all typical turtle joints. They are on ball joints, so therefore they have free movement. And that is it. He has your typical seven points, eight points if you count the jaw, of articulation. His accessories are as follows. He does have a bug pack. And your bug pack is what gives Scumbug an endless supply of recyclable, paralyzing juices. Specifically, Turtle Kill. And it looks like your typical, you know, exterminating pack. Complete with hoses and tubes. And I especially love the little skull and crossbones sculpted in there with caution and toxic. Little measurement gauges, and of course everything plugs right into his chest, which makes me think that whatever kills the, could kill the turtles also powers him in a way. Maybe it's like Mutagen Man. He has to survive off of this stuff. Or perhaps he only thinks he does and it's what keeps Shredder in his control. You know, at playtime, you know, whatever you thought of worked. You know, you're only limited as to your imagination. What you do is you just plug it right into his back like so.
And for the fun part, anyone who had this figure as a kid knows exactly what I'm talking about. Getting these hoses in his chest are not fun. Not easy, because they don't want to stay in. Alright, there's one. Now for the other one. See, they don't want to stay in. Come on, you. Come on. Come on. There we go. All right. And now we take his terminal turtle exterminating gun right here, and it is what he uses to squelch the turtles with a squirt from his own cockroach juices. So I guess that means that the hose is actually drain of him of his own juices that he constructs goes into this tube and then sprays out. So when they say recyclable, they really do mean recyclable. This guy produces his own exterminating juices. You know what? That's just disgusting. And I have a new fondness for this figure because I haven't looked at this guy in years. I haven't even read that bio in years. And it simply plugs in. Doesn't really want to fit all that well, but... I guess it's because the hoses are, you know, they're old, they're not as uh, flexible as they used to be, I guess. And of course, what would a bug busting fiend be without bug buddies? Now that he is a bug, he can't very well kill them, so now he controls them. Much like the Rat King does with the rats, he has four little neon orange bug buddies, little roaches, that he commands to do his bidding, and they're really good to just flinging about. Of course, you know, you flung them about, you lost them, they got sucked up in the vacuum cleaner, and you were without your bug buddies. So these are, if you're looking for one in mint complete condition, make sure he's got four of these little guys. He has to have four. They're all the same sculpt, you know, so it's not like you have to have four specific bug buddies. Just find four and he's complete. And you could also put them on scum bug. They do fit very nicely. I always like putting one up on his boot like that. Makes it look like he's crawling up. And one on his arm like that. And there we have Scumbug. As a must for every Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fan, oh, diehards definitely love this guy. He is one of the greatest figures that they have ever produced. And... He's ex he's extremely popular and just just a fun little disgusting little display piece. Everyone should have this guy in their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle collection. He is terrifying. He is repulsive. He is everything a Ninja Turtle figure should be and more. This is Transato 10. Oh wait, no, this is Fox Hood, formerly Transato 10, and I am signing off.